Yeah, man! Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you oxtail brown stew nut pressure cooked. Alright, so you're gonna need a pound of oxtail, the ox is stale. Alright, this is marjoram, a teaspoon of marjoram. Remember now, you can use any of these herbs, just dry it or fresh. Oregano, teaspoon of oregano. Old cloves, two old cloves. Basil, dried basil, a tablespoon. Dried parsley, a tablespoon. Half scotch bonnet pepper, you can use chili pepper. Spring of thyme. A stalk of scallion. Two medium sized onions, a small tomato, rosemary, a teaspoon of grinded rosemary, pimento berries, or half a teaspoon of pimento berry, a quarter teaspoon, and sea salt, and quarter cup of coconut oil, a tablespoon of white vinegar, a tablespoon of soy sauce, optional, a teaspoon of browning. Oh, oxtail, I've said that before. And we're going to need water. Several cups of water. Alright, I want to get this because we're going to cook the long way today. So, I want to get this oxtail on the roll. Alright, I usually don't wash meat, but it's frozen somewhat. Just sprinkle a cup of water, white vinegar, so I add the water immediately. Just rinse it off immediately. Don't let it soak in the water. Don't let it sit in the water. If you have to wash meat, because I, I don't practice washing meat, especially red meat. Alright, so it's kind of frozen, so I'm just going to let it sit until it's defrost. Alright, so now... I'm going to start with the onion. Just chop your onion in half, easier to handle. Then remove the brown leaf. Just the leaf now enough, because the first layer of the onion is the strongest. Do as you see me doing. While I wait for that, while I wait for this oxtail to the frost, I'm going to prepare the vegetables. I'm going to add the vegetable, the seasonings, twice. I'm going to add the seasonings twice. So I have two containers here. I'm going to call it add one and add two. In natural cooking, it's best if you add the seasoning two times. Because if you don't, if you add the seasoning early, it will, it will cook out and make the food fresh. Alright. The onion, you don't have to rinse the onion. Just slice or dice the onions. And then add half in each container. Spring of time, the tomato. Scallion, just remove the root end, remove the root, and trick, remove the root end and cut the tips of the leaf off, and remove all dying leaves. Just kind of strip them off, kind of peel them off like you would banana. Just strip them off; they'll come off easy. And then you cut the root end off with a knife, and then you cut the tip of the dying the leaf usually the tip is dying as well so you just trim it off alright garlic I didn't say but you're gonna need eight garlic cloves So just remove the leaves from the clove or garlic cloves 
and trim off any kind of spoilage or any brown spot that you might see on it. I'm going to do this oxtail today without pressure cooking and if you want to see oxtail, oxtail pressure cooked just go just visit jamaicadinners.com and look for that, that video alright so the dried pimento berries just measure half a teaspoon or quarter teaspoon and then divide it and add as well rosemary you need a teaspoon add rosemary and remember now you can use any of these herbs fresh just dice it fine parsley measure and add one tablespoon in each container no one tablespoon half in each container All right, in container one, we going we gonna stir fry the onions. So you want to keep the, the the herbs separate. A tablespoon of dried basil. So measure and add in each container one tablespoon. Divide, divide in half. Now, this is oregano. I don't have much left. So, about a teaspoon of dried or fresh oregano, and you add it to the containers. And this is marjoram. About a teaspoon of marjoram. whole cloves find two nice solid whole cloves and put it in the containers as well alright this is my new salt container measure and add a tablespoon use less a little bit less than a tablespoon and now remember now we're going in, in container one just keep the, the onions and the scallions separate, the herbs separate. So we're going to stir fry. That's our scotch bonnet pepper, we're going to add it to a container too. Alright, let me tell you something. If the, if the oxtail is frozen, if it's in a container, like a plastic bag, sealed plastic bag you can put the plastic bag in some water but I, ne I don't recommend that you soak the oxtail in water to defrost it you can put the same saucepan in a bigger saucepan but put the saucepan in water just like how you saw me hold up the plate you pour the water in the container and then you put the saucepan with the frozen oxtail in it all right I'm gonna rinse the vegetables now or just wait until it's defrost Alright, this is our garlic. So grind to puree the garlics, the eight garlic cloves. And in container one, remember now keep the garlic separate from the onion, separate from the herbs, separate from the salt. Alright, 
so just do as you see me doing and just prepare your vegetables the garlic put half in container one other half grinded garlic the other half in container two keep the vegetables separate in container one now dice the scallion And then add half to each container. The tomato. The spring of time. Add that as well. Alright, so we're finished preparing. So this is container two. Alright. Normally I don't prepare the vegetables so soon because this this oxtail, I'm not sure how long how long it's gonna take. But like how we cut the vegetables, it's best you cover the container sealed properly and just put it aside until you're ready for it. Just a piece of ginger. Just cut a piece of ginger about quarter inch piece quarter inch piece of ginger about the first bend of your finger about the size size the first bend of your finger and peel it properly and rinse it off and put it in container one all right keep the vegetables separate all right cover it put it aside for later At least we got that part out of the way. We don't have to worry about that anymore. All right, oxtail is still kind of frozen. Just let it defrost. All right, it's ready. All right, so add some of the water spill. You see, I like to keep my work area clean and clear. So add four cups of water to a saucepan. The saucepan that you're gonna cook the oxtail in so that was too early and now I just added two more so it's four in all all right now put to eat the oxtail in four cups of water we're gonna take the long root add it oh no I don't want to add the garlic now because it's going to cook for a long time and I don't want the garlic, I don't want it to taste like ginger, not garlic, ginger. I don't want it to taste gingery. So don't add the ginger now. Just the pure water, no salt, no seasoning, nothing, just water. properly put the stove's gauge on four medium low we're gonna start the timing now and allow oh I have this torture I have this torture that's growing that's growing on a vine in my yard so I noticed a lot of them the other day so just picking them. So today I'm gonna use chocha in it. People cook with chocha but usually they use like a quarter piece for decor or to flavor somewhat because it's it's a fresh fruit. Is chocha a fruit? Might be. I think it's a vegetable. It wouldn't be a fruit. Fruits are all the same. It's fall in the category of vegetable. Because it's so juicy, it's kinda I don't know if I can eat it raw. I can. It's supposed to can eat raw. But it's fresh. It, it's like flavorless. It reminds me of soup whenever I cook with it. Alright, this is a chocha. We're gonna use one chocha today. But usually 
oxtail is cooked with broad beans or butter beans or none or by itself all right so peel your chocha properly get in between the the joints of the chocha and then cut it in quarters and then remove the art once you do that dice it in cubes you don't want it too fine say about half inch cubes rinse the chocha before you peel it all right add the diced chocha to container two and it's optional you don't have to use it all right this is a piece of garlic that you can add Just put it in peel it and put it in all right it's been 10 minutes you see how my lid I have this little hole so it, it gets to release the, the pressure somewhat if you if you if you have a lid and it doesn't have that pressure releaser hole I'm not pressuring now and I'm just using the right pressure you just slightly slightly open it and leave it so because it, it might overflow the steam of the steam will overflow and and catch the flame and make noise and mess your stove up all right it's not ready I'm just showing it to you where we're at it's 10 minutes now I'm just trimming this fat off because I don't want I don't want why I'm trimming the fat off because I don't want the water to be fatty so at the end of the day when it's stewed down the water is all fatty, fatty so I'm using a food scissors right now I'm just trimming the fat off this one oxtail this one slice of the oxtail this one slice of the ox is stale all right cover it put stove gauge on four medium low all right it's been 30 minutes i recommend you keep the lid on covered within the time i'm just showing it showing it to you because we we're doing something together um but once you know that we're going to use this much of this much water and it's going to take this much time you just keep the lid on within the whole time all right so this is what it looks like after 30 minutes it's tough tough so much when i wonder when this i got done i haven't done this in a while i did it a long time ago and this thing used to do make it as quick all right, let's cover it and allow. Stove gauge is on four, medium low, still. 45 minutes now. All right, this is what it looks like. I'm just showing it to you so you see the progress. All right, so you take one of your ox's tail slice, a slice of the ox's tail, and then you use a fork. Don't use a knife, just use a fork. And then you stick it in the in the oxtail to see how tender it is it's tough but you can tell it's cooking all right stove gauge till i'm four allow now get a small saucepan add well just add a lot of water just fill it up with two cups of water and let it come to a boil once it comes to a boil we're going to turn it off all right All right, once it comes to a boil, let's turn it off. All right, I'm just gonna give you some lessons. Why we add warm water, or hot water to the to the cooking, to the oxtail that's tenderized. If you add room temperature water or cold water, it's gonna stop the cooking. It's gonna slow the cooking down and it's gonna make the meat even harder to cook. It's gonna make it tougher. So, and then it's gonna take longer. So if you add, the same temperature water that's already boiled in, it will continue the cooking at the same boiling temperature. So measure and add two cups of hot water. But before that, I'm just going to show you where it's at. It's still tough, but it's you can tell it's cooking. It's getting there. All right. So do as you see me doing and add two cups of hot water. Or all right, so that was two cups. 
You see? You see how it starts to boil immediately back? That's what you want. So use the pan's lid, cover the pan properly and allow. It's been 50 minutes now. The stove gauge is on four medium low still. Allow. So one hour, it's been one hour and ten minutes now. I'm not gonna open it. I'm just I'm just telling you just keep it and just showing it to you. Just keep the lids the lid on properly. Seal it properly and allow. Alright. Just to make sure. I'm not sure if we're gonna use it yet, but just add two more cups of water. Bring it to boil and then turn it off. One hour and 30 minutes. All right, so near to the one hour and 30 minutes, that's when we start. You have to boil the water close to when you're gonna add it. One hour, 30 minutes later. All right, so you see the water dissolved. Almost four cups of water dissolved already because we added two more and we and we added four at first and we added two more so four evaporated and disappeared in the atmosphere alright so you take one of your oxtail slice and use a fork and poke in it to see how tender it is at the end of the day you want it to poke straight through so you can tell it's poking it I hope I'm using the right word and it's it's still tough it's still take forever for cook can you imagine cow head and tripe tripe cook while two hours pressure and then imagine if you that cook tripe non pressured alright so now we're going to start out we're going to add one more cup of boiling water so in all we used are using or used seven cups of water we started with four and we added three so you just use the use the pan's lid cover it properly and allow you see it's boiling allow stove gauge on four still allow all right two hours later this is just pressuring this is just to tenderize you know? and it took us two hours already Right, so you see the water has dissolved. Alright, you see how the fog just goes straight through? That's what you want. We finally reached there. Giano, I still take forever for pressurize. It took us two solid hours. With the stove's gauge on four, maybe if I had it on six, it probably would have taken us shorter time. But this is what you want. So just take out a couple slices of your oxtail and test it. You don't want it to cook too long because you don't want it to be the meat to break apart from the bone. So it's finished. Turn it off. We're gonna we're gonna start stewing now. Alright, so watch me well and do as you see me doing and remove the oxtail the cooked tenderized oxtail into a separate container remove the oxtail just the oxtail don't put the kind of hold the spoon and drain off the water or the, the oxtail broth this is oxtail broth broth all right, remove the oxtail and pour the oxtail broth or stock in a separate container. All right, use the same saucepan, put it back to heat, put the stove gauge on four, medium low. Just allow the saucepan to kind of dry out all that moist, all the water that was in it. Just allow the saucepan to dry out for a minute. One minute later and the pan is dried out, no water is in it. Add quarter cup of cooking oil. You see how it splashes little? Because some water is in it somewhat still. Alright, just allow the, allow, 
allow the oil to get hot or warm. Alright. Three minutes later, since we added the saucepan, add the chopped onions, a piece of ginger, and the eating oil. And then use a cooking spoon and stir fry for a couple seconds. Add the chopped scallions. Stir fry. You see, you want to add these vegetables first because this they cook. In other words, the garlic cook quick, so you don't want to add the garlic first. So add the chopped onions, let it stir fry and saute for a couple seconds, a few seconds. After about 12 or so seconds, you add the chopped garlic or mashed. And then dice the small tomato, the small tomato, and then stir fry. Why I'm doing this? This this method of cooking enhances the flavor. Natural cooking. All right. Within less than a minute and 30 seconds of adding all the vegetable and stir fry, you add the cooked tenderized oxtail, and then stir it in with the vegetables and stir fry for a couple seconds, a few seconds. Those gauges still on four medium low. Alright. One teaspoon. Oh yes. And some browning of very thick. So I'm starting with one teaspoon, but I would recommend you use half a teaspoon at a time because some browning some brands or countries browning are thick so you probably don't need to use a lot while some like our country where they you know they have to stretch things so it can so they can sell it they make the browning a little bit thinner so you stir that in stir in the browning and make sure the browning coat all the oxtail properly and then you add the herbs with the salt and then stir it in. You gotta do all of this quick enough because the browning is already in it and you don't want the browning to, to start burning. Um, this is jerk sauce. So just add about a quarter teaspoon of jerk sauce. It's optional. It just it, by adding the jerk sauce, it enhances the flavor. Or it spruces the flavor. Right immediately after that, add a thyme stick and then you add the oxtail broth. And one thing, you know, see in the store, let me add this oxtail broth. I think you see beef broth. I've never seen an oxtail stock or broth. Alright, one tablespoon. Add one tablespoon of white vinegar. One tablespoon of soy sauce. And the soy sauce is optional too as well. Alright, so once you add all of those stuff, the seasoning and so forth, just use the pan's lid and cover it properly. Stove gauge is on four, medium low, and allow. This is container two. We're gonna add it next in about 15 minutes or so. Alright, alright. So now we're starting at zero. This is stewing now. Stewing, we're gonna start at different time. Some scotch bunny pepper. I don't wanna forget it, so add it to container two. And if you don't have scotch bonnet pepper, you can use chili pepper. Just cut it in half and put it in the stew. Or you can dice a small piece. Alright, 
I often talk about four medium low. So you see where it starts from low to high, and you see the gauge stops at four. It's not uh, it's not halfway. So it's medium low. Medium would be halfway. All right, 50 minutes now since we start stewing. This is what it looks like. It's kind of farming now. It's kind of farming that that oxtail stew that you want to see. All right, so add the container seasonings from container two. To your brewing stew, oxtail stew. To your brewing oxtail stew. Brew and boil is the same thing. It's like brew, they brew, they boil when they when they're making um beer. Alright, so just add it, watch the pepper, keep the pepper on top because you don't want the pepper to break out and, and make your stew spicy. Alright, so use the pans laid cover properly and allow. Stove's gauge is on four, medium low still. All right, today I'm having it with just plain old white rice. And when I cook, and I feel for some bananas, so I just peel these four bananas, green bananas, and I'm gonna cook it in the rice. All right, 20 minutes later, stove's gauge is still on four. Since we've been stewing, so it's one, so it's two hours and 20 minutes since we start cooking. All right, this is what it looks like. You, you gotta watch the stew, you gotta watch the water, you don't want it to dilute too quick and, 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 your, and your vegetables not cook out properly. So now would be a good time to turn the stove down and low. Give the vegetables and the herbs some time to kind of stew and break down into the oxtail and make the oxtail delicious, flavorful, delicious and flavorful. Alright, 20 minutes on low and 40 minutes stewing. 20 minutes on low, 40 minutes stewing. All right, the stove's been on low for 40 minutes now. Almost off low. And this is what it looks like. You see the water now evaporate fast. And the oxtail is getting juicy. Now would be a good time to remove the time sticks because they'll splash and burn you or mess your stove up faster than you want it to. That's the pepper. I'm gonna remove the pepper now. But if you like spicy food, you can keep it in. Cause, all right. So that's what you want. The gravy look nice, nice color. broad beans or butter beans. If you're going to use butter beans or broad beans from the can, just remove the water and rinse it twice and then put it aside and then use it. Now would be a good time. About a couple more minutes from now would be a good time to add it. If you're going to pressure cook the broad beans, you see how the fart goes through the oxtail? That's what you want. Just looking at it to make sure that it's soaked. Alright, if you're going to pressure cook the broad beans, they'll wash it properly and, and pressure cook it for 20 minutes, 18 between 20 minutes, remove the water and then use it. Alright, so we'll keep it on low and let it stew down. You can keep it on low for up to an hour, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start thickening the gravy shortly. Alright, it's been on low for 20 minutes and it's been stewing for one hour. So that means that we've been cooking for three hours. All right. Now I can start to smell the aroma starting to rise. Now the oxtail kind of build a body. It's becoming the oxtail brown stew. Alright, so this is what a stew looks like. The gravy is thickening. It's juicy and nice. The vegetable breaking, broken down in the stew. Alright, some people, if you use too much oil, you see this little method that you see me doing? You can skim off some of the oil on the top okay, you know oil rises oil and water in the mix so oil always separates itself from water but I'm not going to because I didn't use plenty of oil I'm just showing you a method alright so now we're going to turn the stove up alright so now it's been on low let's stay for one more minute so now we're going to turn it up put the stove's gauge on 4 
turn your stove up, put the stove's gauge on four, medium low. We're gonna thicken the gravy now. You see when you stir in your pot, just be mindful. Be mindful and gentle, because you don't want to break your meat up and serve broken up rocks there. All right, broad beans or butter beans. If you were using broad beans or butter beans, now would be a good time to add it. All right, it's been three minutes now since we turned the stove up. You can add a tablespoon of ketchup, but I'm not going to use any ketchup to, to help thicken. But I'm not going to use any ketchup today. And you can also add a tablespoon of butter to spruce the flavor up somewhat. You all know I don't use butter. So don't, it's just butter spoil the flavor of food if you ask me. All right, so you see the gravy thickening. You see how it's, 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 it's thickening, thickening. And you see how it's kind of sticking to the pot's bottom somewhat. Not yet, but it's getting there. When it starts to stick to the, to the pot's bottom, that's when, that's a sign to say it's ready. All right, cover it, stove's gauge still on four, allow. All right, a solid five minutes since we turned the stove up. It's stewed. This is what it looks like. You can see it's thickening. The, the, the ox tail is, is, is sticking to the bottom. You barely can see any liquid. You see how the gravy just looks thick and juicy and nice. This is what you want to serve to people. Nice gravy. Not watery liquid looking gravy all right so that's what you want nice rich thick gravy look look so see when i draw the, the spoon you see it, it sticks like it, it sticks to the pot's bottom that's a sandwich right? i'm going to turn it off i don't want to dry all my gravy all right finish that's it Whew. and the longest may ever cook in a long while This thing here took three hours. I had three hours, so I had to add a stout in between while I was cooking, just to keep me going. All right, so now I'm gonna serve. I'm not really gonna serve right now, I'm just gonna take a couple of pictures. So stir in your pot before you serve. And take a spoon of this cooked oxtail brown stewed. Alright, so this is oxtail brown stewed, not pressured cooked. See the browning is making it dark, so I'm trying to put it up to the light so you can probably see it better. But if you don't, look at the pictures, because uh, take some okay pictures. Visit JamaicaDinners.com for the recipe. Cook this meal yourself and give us feedback. Subscribe, like, share, and leave a nice comment. So this is brown stewed oxtail, brown stewed oxtail. This is traditional, this is the old fashioned way, a lot of people still cook this way. This is oxtail, oxtail brown stewed with chocho. -cho. Alright, so now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna serve this for me. I'm gonna pull back one of this oxtail. my green bananas that are cooked in rice
I'm just gonna pour some of this gravy on my bed of rice. All right, so let's taste this thing. I always start off by tasting the gravy. Before I eat any meat, I always take about two or three forks full of rice before I start eating meat with the gravy. Alright, like you saw, I gave it thumbs up right away. It's the typical oxtail flavor. Look how juicy this look. Look at that. Tenderized nice. Just right. You see with oxtail in there, you don't want to tenderize it down too soft either. Oxtail should not be tough, but it still should, it should still have a little teeny, little teeny bit of toughness to it, but tenderized. Little teeny bit, like 2% toughness. But it must be, it must be tenderized. If it's not tenderized, it's not going to be a good eat. It's going to be difficult to get the meat off the bone. The salt I used was just right. The flavor of this oxtail brown stew is delicious. That's all I can say right now. I can't describe it much. It's just oxtail. Because I cook it, it's even more delicious. Uh, if I had a <laughs> if I had a sound effect to put two on, I would have just make pom pom. <clears throat> Are we going pop pop or onk onk? <laughs> All right. So, um, so I'm enjoying this oxtail dinner meal. All right, look look how tenderized it is. That that peer off a piece of the meat. I teared off a piece of the meat. And, 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 and breaking it up with my finger so you can see it, it's tenderized. Normally I don't eat this way, I'm just showing it to you. Make sure they clear right away before anybody say anything. Oh, and before I forget, the stew is it. It's recommend after you finish cooking, just let the stew stay for about three hours, at least about three hours there, about room temperature. Let it get cool and let the stew mature before serving, and then you warm it up and then serve. That way, the stew won't be. It's gonna be mad flavorful. I mean it's gonna be good. One tablespoon of browning, browning that I used was sufficient. In the previous video I used half a teaspoon, not a tablespoon, it's one teaspoon of browning, that's what I used. In my previous video I used the one where, where I used a pressure cooker, I used half a teaspoon. And while I was eating I, I did say it would have tasted better if I used one teaspoon. But half a teaspoon can work. You see how difficult it was for me to take this picture because the meat was so dark. 
with half a teaspoon I could see the oxtail and it still works let's make sure I'm saying teaspoon if I hope I didn't say tablespoon teaspoon all right so that's the old clove you don't want to bite in it because it's gonna it's, it has a strong flavor and the pimento berries you know we don't eat pimento berries we just use it for flavoring while cooking It's not spicy at all. I could have left half a scotch bonnet pepper in it. Oxtail is delicious. Everybody know oxtail tastes like. Yes, it's expensive, but you should know why. It's only one tail and an entire cow. So, and it, 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 it has a very unique flavor. Ox. Ox and cow are the same thing. I always wanted that to know. I think the ox is what it's boiled or something. An ox is different from a cow. It is, it is, it is. Alright, so I'm going to suck out the meat out of the thing. That's why you want to treat it. Just suck it, suck it and get out the marrow out of the middle of the tail. So I'm eating how a typical Jamaican would eat oxtail. So this is what you're looking at. The only difference, they wouldn't have it with boiled banana and white rice. They would, but it's it's mostly served with rice and peas. As you see, I'm enjoying this meal. I'm eating every grain of rice. So now I'm leave with my last piece of meat. I always like to leave one piece of meat just to eat by itself. Just eat the one piece of meat. That's just how I eat all the while. If I cook beef, that's how I do it too. I eat, eat, leave the one piece and just chew that one piece of meat and in the end. Oxtail, oxtail tastes delicious, man. So easy the meat come off the bone. See look, that's what you want. Get in between the joints and get all that meat. Including y'all farm people too, you know. And I want to see y'all eat this thing properly. Don't eat around it and then waste the rest of it and throw it away. Get in between the bones and get out all that meat. That's the back like on the two fancy feet, man. I eat the food properly. And a rump for you use your fingers too. Chinese eat with their fingers. Africans eat with their fingers. Muslims eat with their fingers. Well, I don't really like I wouldn't eat with my fingers straight out, but you can use your finger now and then. You know, to touch things. Chinese eat Chinese eat with their finger? I'm mean, not sure. I'm mean, not gonna send it wrong enough. I'm not sure if Chinese eat with their fingers. <laughs> they use chopstick. I think they use, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but I, I don't want to say anything wrong. Alright, so, 
So when you're done, this is what you this is what you left in your plate. Bone, nothing but one piece of bone. And if this bone could chew, I probably would have chewed it too. Suck the bone dry. I'm finished. That's it. See ya. Excuse me. I'm gonna let it stay. Yeah man!